Hello folks, it's Monday. Well, we've got something interesting. This is a Fidelity 2001 which Mark's looked at. He says he's transmit and receive uh, is okay. It's come from our trades, uh, one of our trade customers at Sheffield that gave us this as a freebie. So the other thing is, this set has come with no front. I'm going to take the knobs off. I can't remember whether it came with knobs or not. But that's not what, what we're talking about. So, this set has come to us like that. Now, that company who do the um, decals advertise on eBay, we've bought a realistic TRC2000 set of decals, and we've also bought an Audio Line 340 set of decals. So, um, and I've I've sent in the Fidelity thousand, two thousand and two thousand and one front panels so they could make decals. So those offerings, we got absolutely nothing out of it. We I paid for postage, so it cost me to do it and to dismantle the sets to send them. But it's for the good of the um, hobby, shall we say? Now one of our other trade customers, who is also a radio ham has got facilities to do um, oh is it laser cutting and things and he's it's determined to fall over isn't it this he has made for me these on hard plastic but it's all right using those uh, decals from matey but they're really made to sit on top of what uh, you've got left and we, because we've got nothing left, it was going to look a bit uh, funny. So he's made me those. And he will make them for other people as well. But, uh, they, you know, something like £10 a section. They, they're not cheap. So we're going to stick those on. But we don't need to do that to the end. I really wanted to show this set. I think he's just become a full licensee as far as ham radio goes. I think it's him. So well done to him. Uh, yeah, that's good fun, isn't it? So you get the biggest speaker on this model, especially if it works. Hang on a minute. What am I? What is? It's a two thousand. Have I, have I ordered? What am I doing here? Yeah, it is a. Oh, we'll start again. This is a Fidelity two thousand. I thought it was a, a two thousand and one. Well, there's the tail I was looking for, and that fits right. Forget about that. This is the right connector, and that's the right tail. What am I talking about? Why did I think this was a two thousand and one? So it's a Cybernet 134. So, let's see what we can get to work. I'll put the power supply on. Connect it up through that little power tail. Now when I did the Midland 121 yesterday, I switched picture in picture on and nothing happened. So I'm going to switch picture in picture on the game. It's come up on the monitor, it doesn't mean it's recording there. See, the newer you, newer stuff you buy, and the more you spend on it, the more it seems to be software-based and uh, doesn't work. I've got broadcast quality gear here, but I can't use it because it's not digital, it's analog. And so what happens is you, you upload it to YouTube, it sees it as... Uh, 320 pixels well it isn't it's you know 440 line resolution but it's not seeing it like that because it isn't a digital format so I'm looking at really crisp pictures on my monitor when I use that but then it comes out crummy and there you are so we have to use newer stuff which is inferior oh 
can't even change that knob. We'll have to use the screwdriver. So the thing missing is, we have got the red thing missing. That is totally missing from the front. So we're probably going to have to make one of that. I, I might find a scrap AM set somewhere with uh, enough red to, to do that. Take that other lid off, which is determined to fall off. And I can't see any shenanigans on this set. It, it looks a genuine set, but missing its front. Does dimmer work? Dimmer works. Don't know if the tone works. We need to plug a mic in. Standard cybernet. All I've got to do is find the standard cybernet mic, which should, of course, be on the floor. Yes, indeed, on the floor it was. Standard cybernet mic. Right, we're on picture in picture. We're on channel 20. Let's key it up. It's doing 4.2 watts. So that's fine. And we'll fill in some paperwork in a moment. Let's see whether it receives. Set the signal generator. And we'll have a look at the sign ad meter. RF gain's not right. Correct. Doing 0.4 microvolts, so it's working nicely. I'll be going through a tune-up. He's probably done it anyway, but I'll be going through a tune-up. If I get my screwdriver to that channel switch, we'll turn it to channel 40. have a look at the VCO. Because you don't know the set's history, it's sensible. I mean, where did all the front escutions go? It's not like they fell off this type of set. I'm talking about where do things go. I'm looking for a crocodile foot leave, which well, Mr. Chippy's actually. Resist the four far side. Let's get rid of that bit of wax. Switch the meter on. Should be four volts, I think. transmit it should be 4 volts especially if I can get my prod on it it's 3.8 we're just the, the just the trimmer four point one will do me it's now four point two on receive Four volts on receive, three point eight something on transmit. That'll do. So just need to check on channel four, on channel one. Screwdriver at the channel selector switch. See what we've got. Two point two is okay, and two point two three is okay. So that's the VCO. It wasn't far out enough to cause problems, but whilst we're in it, may as well do it. We'll tune up the transmitter. I think I heard the post come, so I'll go and look at that when I've done that. So, we're in the... Let's go back to the main meter, and we're in the 30 watt scale, so 4 watts is there. We'll 
peak at the centre of the peak. Looks spot on this. In fact, to be honest, I ought to be filling in a, a sheet of paper. Where did I put either the blue or the green trimming tool? So I'll go looking for that as well. Okay, let's see whether we can just make sure this is spot on. I think it will be. So we want to put the power to full. It needs to be 4.4 watts to do this, which it is, it's about 4.8. going to go through. I'm keying up each time because I don't want to thrash the set and kill it. Legality aside, never leave it at full whack or you'll kill the radio. Just going to check that one there again. Because it can be affected. Clockwise on the yellow one for four watt, four point four watts, which is there, and then anti-clockwise. They say for three point eight watts, but seeing as we're allowed four watts, we're going to set out to four. They only do that so they can get it through customs. So so now that's, we'll check it on the other channels. So, um, on channel 20 it's 4 watts, let's go to channel 30, Forty. channel 40, oh, it's 4.1, channel 1 is 3.9, so see whether we can, it's, it's, as far as I want it to be out, let's see whether we can just pull that slack up a bit. Check it on channel 40. It's four watts there. That's 3.95 on channel one. Check it back on channel 20. It's 4 watts. So it had been tuned before, I just needed to verify it was right. Right, on low power, switch to the low power setting. It's only doing about 10 milliwatts. And it stopped transmitting altogether. Let's try again. Dirty preset, then. I haven't got any service cell on here. And the transmit current on full power is 1.375. Let's check the deviation 
Wow, it looks about three. We'll verify that on our other test set. So that is now four plus four. Uh, we'll deal, deal with the frequency. And the frequency, if we go to the frequency counter, just slightly low, 27, 79102. Just pop that up a fraction if it'll go. Certainly will go. Leave it at that. Let's look at receive. Check we've got the mic gain. To full and the RF gain to full. So for 12 dB, we've got 0 0.45. For 10 dB, 0 0.34. Um, well, it's 0.75. Squelch. 3, 10, 30, 100. Da, 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 da. Never opens. I've got these in all the wrong box, haven't I? Right, threshold of squelch. These eight microvolts, which is far too tight. I suspect the detector's out, to be honest. So let's go over to the oscilloscope and actually switch it on 100 microvolts on the signal generator and let's just check the detector that was spot on I think one of the IFs out so we'll go to the cyanide meter we'll start at the front end and we'll put about 6 dB and see whether we can get an improvement. A little bit there, but nothing on that one. Tiny bit on that one. Tiny bit on that one. Put a bit more signal on for the IF. The one under there. Let's see what we've got now. So for 12 dB, you've got 0 0.35 microvolts. For 10 dB, 0 0.31. And for 1 dB, 0.6. Let's look at the squelch. Go to the attenuator for that. And let's just have a full squelch. 3, 10, 30, 100. Still not coming in at any point. So we'll adjust the squelch preset. That's coming into 100 microvolts, which is where we want it. 
And let's see where the sensitivity is now. Because it was blooming useless where it was. That's threshold set on the radio. Still not good, that's 1.7. I'll just try setting the squelch a bit more carefully. Yeah, you can get it for 0.95. So that's sorted that out. So on the meter, on the radio, Turn picture in picture off. When we key up, it's banging across, so we'll just get that adjusted. So I want it to read four, which is there. On receive, put a hundred microvolts on the signal generator, and that should read S9 but it doesn't so it's high high and let's get the signal meter to read S9 which is there meter lamp works mm, switch missing um, yes Yes, I think PA is being got at. Right, put that on one side. So we're going to have to restore what? Oh, is it just channel nine snapped off? Is it PA on the? Is PA on the squelch switch on these? So that makes it a bit easier. Channel nine probably only got a couple of wires connected. Just try PA. I think it's on my game. Testing one two, testing one two. It is. So that's fine. Yep. So yes, but channel nine switch broken. We get that sorted. So we've done the set. It works perfectly. We haven't done deviation. Uh, just do that. I think it's lunch break. Then we'll set about sorting the cosmetic things out on this radio. So I'm just plugging into the quartz lock test set behind me. Just check the deviation. What? Oh, we're on PA still. What? It's about 4.5, which is a bit silly. So we need to make sure that the that one is in its centre position. It's not easy to adjust. That looks to be centre position. It's been replaced. And then we'll do the deviation with that one. Voila. That gives us a peak of 2.5. Go back to the Marconi test set. And just make sure if the deviation meter on this is actually working today or whether it's playing shenanigans it's just capacitors in the deviation meter section of the test set but I'm not prepared to take the test set off the bench so we just use another test set behind me for the deviation reading All right here we go go back to the main meter Wow, it's spot on. So it's not playing up today, but you can't trust it. It's 2.5 peak. It's 
because it was playing up earlier but it isn't now 2.2 .2 to 2.5 kilohertz that was low good so just cosmetic stuff to do I just showed you that and I got picture and picture on so I'll just do, I will just put picture and picture on just to show you wallow one two one two wallow so I've withdrawn the front and need to withdraw it a bit further to be able to take it away to get to the screws that hold the channel 9 switch out on and we're held by the earthing lug there that goes to the decoupling capacitor on the mic socket which is fitted from the outside kind of so it wants tightening up as well so we need to pull that so we can just withdraw it a little bit more I don't think we'll have to undo the wiring or anything like that um, and then hopefully we can change that channel 9 switch and I'll find one on the scrap chassis it doesn't have to be one of these sets it can be anything with a similar looking switch the switch is there but the shaft's snapped off and then we can play it um, gluing the escutcheon back on the other thing we've got to overcome is we've got the red bit missing there the red display filter which goes across we need to find a scrap set with quite a bit of red display filter material. So I'm hoping we've got an AM one which we can do that from. I'd hate to have to hold up the video while I actually order a sheet of red display filter. Anyway, I'll have lunch and come back and have a look. Okay folks, so I managed to recover some... It's not... Um, plastic isn't red it's uh, a polarizing filter from something or other and it's good enough so let's uh, power it up and then I'll tell you what two things I still need to do I've put the new switch in for the channel select the channel 9 switch in uh, back, backwards I thought it was going to be channel 9 down for on but it isn't it's uh, it's up for on so I just need to take the front back off with its six screws and just reverse that and the other thing is the cutout for the mic socket hasn't taken into consideration as a shoulder so I'm going to have to just pop that um, escutcheon off, go into our organ workshop and use a wad punch to open it up. So, But you can see the gist of it and it looks uh, kind of normal. Certainly turns it back into a workable radio. So we'll plug into the... Ooh, we'll plug into the area if I can find it on the floor. So it's Sabinet 134, don't forget that. It's a very good set. It works well. There's so many people seem to think that the Fidelity 2000 the Fidelity 2001 are, are as dire as the Fidelity 1000. It just isn't the case. It's a really good set and you get the bigger speaker. It's better set than the any of the Rotels because you don't get the bigger speaker. One nine a Roger. Helps you. I'm a seven foot twenty strong behemoth, and I will destroy you, middleweight. And that's the kind of thing you expect. I think we'll park it at channel 31 where it's a bit more sane so there you go not really usable as it was I haven't cleaned up the case at all and you know that could be dealt with couldn't it Fidelity 2000 from 1981 and that's a good demonstration of the laser made um, I'm not going to call them decals they're escutions because of the thickness uh, from uh, 
somebody who I know. Thanks for watching.